let's welcome uh, dr harsha thank you thank you um, i i will begin with both thanking you as well as to um, dr i mean mr bimarao uh, kundbiari yeah hi dr harsha um, hello yeah i i i'm so happy that uh, you're there yes hello <laughs> It's been a long time. We haven't met each other for a very yeah, long time yeah. now, and uh, I'm so excited that I, I'm getting to meet you uh, uh, because of uh, you that I am now meeting Janki because, as she says, she has known me, but I, we have not met. So it's a great thing. Um, basically, uh, when when you ask me on what I should present, then I think the latest thing the whole world is working on is. nutrition care process and uh, to just give you a brief thing on why i am interested in promoting nutrition care processes i did a major multi uh, national uh, uh, research called dings diabetes in india nutrition guidelines study um, this was with academy of nutrition and dietetics usa and the israel university hebrew university and um, you know i could have got a marwadi a gujarati a tamilian an andhraite i could have got any language person in chennai itself but that would not have given us a true guideline i felt that i must get dietitians from all over india but unfortunately they could not deliver as per the the international terminology and that was a very pathetic picture because yeah. Yeah. we cannot compete with the rest of the world if we are not going to talk the same language see how much we were struggling <laughs> a little while ago in fine tuning the technology same thing if we want to be heard as professionals in the rest of the world we are the world's biggest population the biggest patient load we should tell the rest of the world uh what should be the dietary practices of human beings not indians or so or, or africans or americans it has to be humanity and we have got the biggest potential with us for us to document that my my i am the only one who has been certified in nutrition injury spe specialist maybe one day i would want to address you on what is nutrition injury as such per se all this is new terms but unfortunately we are still on food based dietetics we are still telling our patients you are diabetic don't eat potato don't eat banana <laughs> this is how we are practicing clinical nutrition which is a very sad state of affairs and uh, sometimes it is very very uh, embarrassing that you know when when a patient comes to you and say i went to sir, another dietitian and she told me something different than what you told what you are telling it becomes even more embarrassing because you know you you have to protect your fellow dietitian and at the same time you have to save your skin and it becomes extremely embarrassing so what i'm going to tell you as far as nutrition care process is basically understanding that it is a use universal terminology when we learned nutrition we were we are taking from all the subjects the physiology the biochemistry you know uh, the microbiology we are taking it from the agriculturists are talking a different language when it comes to food so when we are taking from different things there had to be something which was only our language and that is what nutrition care process is all about so i can i start i mean can i start showing you my slide yes 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 um i say share share screen yes and then yeah how do i make it full screen just a uh, slide show go to slide show ma'am yeah. go to slide show here yeah from the beginning from the okay okay now um the nutrition care process is the one which is going to be empowering us dietitians it's a most powerful tool now nutrition and teamwork are critical to promote optimal health the role of dietitians continues to change and nutrition care process is the one which empowers the dietitian now health was identified as something which we said that it is just a well being that is how it started 
But the word well-being continues, and in 1948, they defined it as health is a state of complete physical, mental, social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And now, you know, they are even adding social and they are adding financial well-being and everything to the whole thing. So, you know, there's no one single marker when it comes to definition of health. But when it comes to, uh, you know, my, the screen is actually covering up uh, somebody wanting, waiting in the waiting room. Is that, that can be uh, taken away from my screen? Because it makes it very difficult for me to read what I'm uh, what I'm trying to say. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Uh, health outcome, uh, uh, you know, is a very uh, uh, our individual health outcomes that the person hopes to achieve. Earlier, I remember when I started my practice, we used to have cyclostyle sheets, you know, which uh, read like a menu card, <laughs> and it was like thousand four hundred calories, thousand two hundred calories, thousand eight hundred calories, and the dietitian had a thing like. Bedtime morning tea bar, coffee bar, ho uh, horlicks bar, milk, you know. And we just ticked off something and wrote that 100 ml, 150 ml. We have come a long way. We have stopped doing that now. And we are all talking about, uh, you know, individual way of how to handle them. So to inform care, these health outcome goals must be very specific, measurable, actionable, reliable, and time bomb. And you can see on my right, you know, there is a whole picture of how many people are there on the team. But I would want to highlight and say that we dietitians are very, very important when it comes to the nutrition care process. Why is it moving? not moving forward because suddenly it is showing as a pencil. I'm not wanting to change. So what is happening? Uh, go go back, ma'am. Uh, press the back backspace button. Yeah. Now we can again uh, press the front button. No. Yeah. Now. Okay, no, so the dietitian changing role. Over time, dietitians have changed in response to change in health and healthcare needs. And it was actually the nurses who identified, you know, even now I fight with the Nursing Council of India because they have the full BSc nutrition program that they have, you know, for the nurses and they try to teach that in the first six months. And then when they are actually supposed to be doing clinical nutrition, like enteral and parenteral nutrition, they have absolutely no idea of what they have to do at all, which is a very sad state of affairs. But nevertheless, it is the nurses, it is the word nutricus, which means to suckle at the breast. And both nutrition and, uh, and nursing comes from the same word. So they were the ones who said, Okay, we should stop doing uh, nutrition as part of the nursing care. We want the nutritionist to take over it. And so it began with something where we said, okay, we will provide food for the patient. Then the word food changed to nutrition for inpatient. And then we also included nutrition for populations living at home. So we are now looking at not only the inpatient, we are also looking at the outpatient. So progressively, we find that the dietitians uh, are changing their role as such. So the new word that has come into existence that is called care, care process. Now, what is care process? It consists of four elements, assessing needs, planning the care, implementing the care, evaluating the process and outcomes of care. Now, if these are the four elements, then you define it as a process whereby clinicians and patients discuss, agree, review plans to achieve goals. It is actually a conversation between the person and the healthcare practitioner about the impact the condition has on their life and how they can be supported to best meet their health and well-being needs in a whole life way. You will not believe that it takes about 90 minutes. That is what how Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics US has defined and said that an interaction between a dietitian and the client has to last at least 90 minutes. And it is not that we are imposing Care planning is not something where we impose and say from tomorrow morning, you will get up and eat at this time, this thing or drink this at this time. No, it is not permitted. 
and that is the reason why it takes a lot of time. So, taking the time to do a good care plan with a focus on the outcome and quality of care, this can be a very challenging thing for any anybody as such. And that is why we must get familiar with the terminology. The care plan is owned by the individual and shared with others with their consent. That is, we cannot take what we discuss with our client. There is something, a clause which says that it belongs to the individual. It can be a written document, either electronic or paper-based, that is used and altered constantly throughout the day. There is a template which defines the areas of care plan. And it covers whenever possible the care plan is developed with the patient client rather than for. Please, I've highlighted the word with the patient and client rather than for. That means you are an you are an expert, but you're not supposed to impose what you are what you are knowing as an expert, but you are guiding the person to take a decision and say this is what would be good good for you. So you're expected to read and use care plans to guide your practice with individual patients and clients. So it's a good idea to get to know what kind of information they should contain as far as these documents are concerned. Now, there is a new word that is coming in. Nutrition support is what we also use in the clinical terminology. So care and support planning is defined as a process which helps people set their own aims and then secure the support and care that they are needed to achieve them. So... I've already said, as, as uh, Dr. Janki said, that, you know, I believe in the word unlocking our potential, but we are not only unlocking our own potential, we are also unlocking uh, with the key, the person-centered coordinated care, okay? So our patients become the center point for us. Now, how do we improve the health status through nutrition care? by nutrition intervention. So we are supposed to have strategies and focus of care based on state of health. And the continuum of care should be meant also for totally healthy, acute illness, chronic disease or condition and terminal illness. It is not that as a nutritionist or a dietitian, you are only looking at people when they become sick. And that is a sad state of affairs. Because at this point of time, you find dietitians only in the hospital and they are confined to the kitchen. But that's not a true picture. And that is where we need to understand our potential and power of what we can do. So please remember there has to be a continuum of care. Totally healthy people also have to be under care so that they can be maintained. And it also gives us a standard of what you need to compare with. Now, there was a thing that we have. Uh, you know, each of you must be, must have known the uh, cutoff point for anemia. That used to be my nutrition in injury research work. And I was shocked to see that, you know, the cutoff points that we talk of anemia are actually arbitrary. They're not evidence-based. And awesome. actually, I was shocked when I realized that, you know, probably the, by the Western standards, we all may be defined as anemic. But actually, that is the reason why we are the world's biggest population. We are alive and kicking because keeping that iron level low was what prevented the infection from overtaking us. It, till now, if our prime minister is talking about, you know, uh, uh, people care, care orientation and we are able to survive is what they're saying. It is because, you know, somewhere down the line, we have learned. If the current goes, the rich people are the ones who will get malaria, but the people on the roads don't get malaria when the current goes. So somewhere we need to understand the standards with which we are working and how we are going to define all these things as such together. Now, the, in, the, when you are talking about improving nutrition care through the, uh, through the nutrition parameters, we are looking at human biology factors. We are looking at lifestyle factors. We are looking at food and nutrient factors. We are looking at environmental factors. We are looking at system factors. I have summarized that in the table here, which is very difficult to read, but we are all aware as dietitians, we know what are the human biology factors. We are also looking at, you know, the, uh, the lifestyle factors, age, gender, everything. We have been documenting it. It's only that it has been grouped under a particular heading so that it is very easy for us to document it very chronologically. So purpose of providing nutrition care is to restore a state of health by influencing the factors that are contributing to the imbalance. And it is only the RDs that are highly qualified to do this. 
The basic structure of the common nutrition process care, it consists of four parts, the assessment, the diagnosis, the intervention, monitoring, and evaluation. Now, when you look at assessment and diagnosis, they are supposed to be the problem identification. When you look at intervention, monitoring, and evaluation, it comes under problem solving. So we divide the four into problem identification and problem solving. Now, um, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics was the one that standardized the nutrition care process. Actually, I learned uh, nutrition in a very different way. When I say injury, I learned it with Professor Mary and Kite. And that is a different ball game altogether. That's very fascinating for us to become injury specialists. But at this point of time, as a dietitian, we are only looking at how we will include language under nutrition care process. So what is nutrition care process? NCP is a systematic problem solving method. It is a systematic approach to providing high quality nutrition care. It is designed to improve the consistency and the quality of individualized care for patient, clients or groups and the predictability of the patient-client outcomes. I've already mentioned the four steps, but what I want to highlight is that for each of these four steps, you have a very standardized nutrition language. You just cannot write what you feel like writing. You have to go by what is the standardized nutrition language. This is where nutrition care process becomes very important. Now, there is a big picture as far as the whole model is concerned. There is a central core which talks about relationship between the client and the dietetics professional, and it has to be individualized client focused. Then there is an outer ring which talks about the environmental factors and the professional strengths of the dietitian. And it is supported by other systems like screening and referral systems and the outcomes management system. So this whole picture, I will now show it to you. This is what it looks like. If you will go into your internet, you don't have to worry, you will get this picture straight away. But I'm just trying to highlight to you that this is how they have captured the whole care process and created a model to say how it impacts when it comes to your management using nutrition care process. Now, when we said that, the word that came up was we must have a standard language. Now, that standard language will allow us to describe our practice, improve our practice, communicate our findings, and share interventions, expectations, and outcomes. So irrespective of whether the patient saw me today and tomorrow, it will the patient travels to Hyderabad and wants to see Dr. Janki, Dr. Janki does not have to worry at all because my documentation process she just has to go through it and take it forward from that. This is what we are saying, that there is a continuum in our practice with the language that we are using. So this is the promise of nutrition care process terminology. It is globally universal systematic decision-making process. It provides individualized patient-centered care. Description of unique nutrition assessment process. It is more independent and autonomous thought process that is as far as nutrition diagnosis. One of the slides I will give you the importance of this nutritional diagnosis of how it is different from medical diagnosis. There is a clarity on exact nature of nutrition intervention that is provided by the dietitian. And there is emphasis on nutrition monitoring and evaluating outcomes and subsequent modification of nutrition intervention it is warranted. So this is the classic picture we have that you see on the right. You see ND, the diagnosis. NA is nutritional assessment. ND is the diagnosis. Then we have the implementation. And then we have monitoring and evaluation. So as I mentioned, I trained under Dr. Kai. She was the one who introduced the nutritional diagnosis, which is very, very important for us. Please remember, you need to learn about this nutritional diagnosis. It is, and there is something called PE statement. I will, I will explain that also. But it, is, it, it cannot happen overnight. We need to do a lot of practice. And no PE is taught. This. So we need to learn it now. How did it start? Like Dr. Kite started in the 80s. It, was, it took 20 years. Early 200, 2000 is when U.S. started exploring process and terminology. In 2004, International Confederation of Dietetic Association adopted this. 2005 to 10, the international stakeholder meetings took place. And then there were international workshops in India, uh, Sweden, Norway, Brazil, Mexico, um, and everybody. And that is where I felt that India 
it should be our dietitian should be the most competent one when it comes to that so they have started mapping and doing electronic health records also using this terminology now let's come to the terminology now look at the a nutritional assessment and what are the things you have domains what are the domains of assessment you are looking at food and nutrition uh, excuse me food. excuse me ma'am uh, yeah. i'll uh, interrupt once yeah uh, ladies whoever using the white board please uh, undo that because i will give you all the information don't worry don't try to put your hand on and try to um, you know try, uh, try to record or something recording is going on and uh, slides are there everything is will be available for you i know you are all very interested everything will be available for you please undo the white board it is very difficult for us to read it thank you ma'am sorry for interruption yeah. please continue. no no problem no problem i was actually wondering you know why somebody was being a child and scribbling all over but i'm glad you brought to the attention okay so you know we are, we are totally aware we have been talking about a b c d of nutritional assessment we talk about anthropometrics we talk of biochemistry we talk of clinical nutrition uh, clinical findings and then we talk about the diet so this is the same domains that they have taken but we are looking at the terms that are very very important so when we talk about food and nutrition related you will be talking of variety source of carbohydrate whether they eat alone or they are avoiding something when you look at anthropometric weight change frame size so they have identified all the terms that are related these are some of the examples you won't believe they put together something like thousand words in terminology and you're not going to be able to by heart all of them so you need to learn how to be using it you know there is now a new technology that has come in it will be beyond me when i'm just talking about it as an introduction to talk of something called mind mapping when it comes to specific disease mind mapping tells you which are the terms that you will be basically looking at if you're looking at obesity then you are interested in weight change and frame size but if you're looking at somebody who is on protein energy malnutrition you're looking at something else so the terminology which will fit into a particular disease is also been identified under mind map but here at this point of time i want to highlight to you that when it comes to nutritional assessment terminology these are the domains and these are the examples of how the terminology has been put together now when we look at it in terms of the quality of care that is given it gives you consistent structure and framework provides high quality care it addresses the process of care systematic and consistent steps of ncp the content of care evidence based practice guidelines this is what is important you actually have to pay a fee you know for you to access the evidence based library of academy of nutrition and dietetics and this is where you know you will be able to work very fast you don't have to reinvent a uh, wheel it's all done for us all we have to do is how we can take it and then the third part of the whole thing in this quality of care is the critical thinking now what is critical thinking it is like you know you look at the content of what is the best evidence what are the scientific principles what are the protocols and then you use this content of care to form your process of care uh, and the model for it and then you use the same thing this and this will give you the outcome so it improves the quality of care and health state so this is how you are demonstrating quality of improvement it is not that you have just given a prescription to your patient and then you say okay that that's be it uh, if if they come back to you and say it didn't improve then you will say oh you did something wrong you don't talk like that to the patient you you need to be taking them forward and saying okay let's see where you were how much you were able to incorporate what i told you where is it that you had an obstacle where is it that you couldn't take it forward so this is how we look at the content of the care the process of the care and influence the outcome of the care this is how we demonstrate quality now when it comes to critical thinking as far as assessment is concerned how will your brain work you will determine important and relevant data that is collected determine the need for additional information that you require selecting assessment tools and procedures that match the situation applying assessment tools in valid and reliable ways and validation of data so this is where your 
thinking back of your mind when it comes to nutritional assessment you're constantly ticking on your toes it is not that you're sitting one quietly in one corner you know thousand terms are there i have to search for the right word no 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 you have to get fast enough to understand where you will pick up this data and how forward how far so critical thinking means you're thinking on your toes you're not sitting in one corner and doing meditation and contemplation you're thinking on your toes so this is the description of critical thinking what is it that you will think you have to determine all these factors that i have enumerated here for you so if you look at it in terms of that i have just summarized together nutritional diagnosis um, no it's covering my screen okay nutritional diagnosis terminology would be looking at intake which is ni clinical uh, nutrition clinical thing behavior and environmental other look at the intervention terminology food and nutrition delivery nutrition education nutrition counseling co coordination of nutrition care so for each step nutrition assessment has got whole lot of terminology nutritional diagnosis has whole lot of terminology nutrition intervention has a different things to do and when it comes to monitoring and evaluation you have to connect it back to nutritional assessment this is all cycle of your nutrition care process it means that right from step 1 to step 4 each time you have to keep going back and forth to say what i told to the patient has it happened if it is not happening then you need to make a correction as such now if you say that this is how we divide nutrition assessment nutritional diagnosis nutrition intervention and monitoring so everything is done how you observe how you determine how you select how you apply how you distinguish how you validate all that is explained to you under assessment how you will find pattern when it comes to and relationship to the data that you have how will you make inferences how will you state the problem clearly and singularly all this has been explained to you under diagnosis how will you put your goals prioritize prioritize them and how will you define the nutrition prescription or the basic plan that also is explained under nutrition intervention and when it comes to monitoring and evaluation how frequently you should be doing the monitoring and evaluation there are some things no point in checking every day you might check it once in a month or once you know we always say newborn baby you want to check the weight every day but once the baby passes one month you are not checking every day and then by the time the baby is one year you do it only once a year after that so you need to understand when the monitoring and evaluation has to happen so this is called as critical thinking process now we come to the next domain and that is the nutritional diagnosis now when we look at diagnosis what are the terminologies that we would look at is in terms of the domains being intake clinical behavior and environment these are the three main domains and the terms that you would use here are also available these are some of the examples as i told you there are lot many more in terms of even the clinical but you will understand that this is how they have broken up the terminology under each domain and then they give you the terms for it that you should be looking into now how do you do critical thinking for diagnosis you find patterns and relationship among the data and the possible causes make inferences state the problem clearly and singularly ruling in and ruling out this is a new concept uh, with with respect to diagnosis you know sometimes we will say anemia and we always think of anemia as iron deficiency anemia not true you could have anemia because of not deficiency but because the person was losing more blood you know that could be hookworm infestation or person met with an accident or the person is not having enough of protein and because of that the iron is there but the globin part of it is missing for it or the cofactors folic acid deficiency might be there so if you look at it that way you need to rule in what are the factors that are applicable and rule out what is not applicable this is a very important concept when it comes to diagnosis and identifying an etiology that may be resolved lessen or managed by the intervention we cannot be talking about what the doctors want we have to talk about what is possible by us identifying signs and symptoms that are measurable or that change or that change may be tracked 
and you have to prioritize identified problems. So this is as far as nutritional diagnosis is concerned. Now, when it, uh, how was the PA statement as far as diet uh, diagnosis is concerned created? You evaluate nutritional assessment, find patterns and relationship among the data and causes. You identify the problem, focus on those that can be treated by nutritional intervention. Do not get into things that cannot be treated by nutritional intervention. And then you validate and confirm using signs and symptoms that you found this as an assessment problem. This is how you, the reason why this problem has happened. And this is the sign and symptoms. You look at the etiology and you make a correction. So this is how you create a PES statement. Relationship between the PES statement, it is not that it is something that you just write and forget after that. You have to connect it again after having written the PES statement. This is how it comes under the diagnosis. Diagnostic label for the nutritional problem, etiology, the root cause of the nutrition problem, signs and symptoms that are measurable evidence of nutritional problems. Once you've written the PA statement, please understand that the, the E goes into providing the rational for intervention and the S provides the rational for your goals and outcomes. And this is what takes you to intervention and your monetary and bring it back to the assessment. So your P is, yes, writing your PA statement is the biggest challenge that the clinical nutritionists have to learn. This is the language that will take us forward in terms of how we are going to uh, tell people why you want them to do that. Why do you, you, how will you convince your patient what is the rational for your intervention and what is the rational for your goals and outcomes. So this is the one which links your assessment to intervention. It uses data to quantify and qualify the problem and the base outcome measures on signs and symptoms. So this is the importance of PA statement, as a PA statement and its relationship as far as diagnosis is concerned. Now look at this. I mentioned to you the difference between a medical diagnosis and the nutritional diagnosis. When it comes to the medical diagnosis and you will look at diabetes, then all of us, you and I know when the person talks about diabetes, then uh, we are the, the doctor will look at it in terms of whether we give OHA or whether we give insulin or whatever it is. But for me, the nutritional diagnosis is there is an increased blood glucose. Now, if the, the doctor has given them uh, injection, you know, a, a, an injectable or they've given them a tablet or something like that. And then, you know, there is a sudden fall. There is a hypoglycemia that happens or there is an increased carbohydrate intake. So we will be looking at it in terms of the words that are related to nutrition for our diagnosis when it comes to diabetes. We, we will be talking about this person has come to me because he has increased blood glucose level. We will not write that he's come because he's got diabetes. Okay. He's come because his intake of carbohydrates is much more than what is required. We will not write their diabetes. Similarly for trauma and closed head injury. We are talking about total nutrition support, hydration, increased energy needs. We are not interested in the medical diagnosis, but we use the medical diagnosis in terms of connecting it to a nutritional diagnosis. Now you understand the importance of the terminology that we are using when it comes to diagnosis because it helps us as far as our PEA statements is concerned. Look at for obesity, intake in more calories than burning, lack of access to food, when it comes to mechanical ventilation, excess energy, which is more of carbohydrate loading. So please understand that when it comes, there's a big difference between the nutritional and the medical diagnosis as well. Now let's come to the intervention part of it. Nutrition prescription, nutrition, that is what we write. And that covers the nutrition intervention. Now when you're talking of nutrition intervention, following are the ways by which you can do an intervention. You can do a food and nutrient delivery directly, okay? You can give a TPN, you can give an enteral nutrition, you can give them a plate, you can give it whichever way. So you can have a food and nutrient delivery or you may not actually deliver food, but you can give them nutrition education in terms of content and skill development. Or you can do, now this, you please understand the difference between education and counseling. Both are not same. 
till date, we have been constantly interchangeably using the word education versus counseling. If you're looking at education, we are talking about content and skill development. If you're talking about counseling, then there is a theoretical approach and a strategy of how there is a motivational interviewing and there are different ways by which we can do the counseling as such. And then along with this nutrition intervention, we also have to look at something which is known as coordination of nutrition care. Now, for example, if you're giving a, a parental nutrition, you need to coordinate with the nurse because you are not the one who is putting the parental nutrition into the patient. So you need to coordinate. Similarly, if with enteral nutrition, if you don't coordinate with them, very many times, you know, what will happen? The feed was just hanging there and the next feed arrives and the sister looks, oh my God, nothing has gone in and she will fast forward. And so what will happen next? There is an abdominal distension, right? And then the next thing they'll tell is, oh, the patient has gone into abdominal distension. Will you please uh, stop giving the next feed? And who is who is at, in trouble? Both we as diet, uh, dietitians and the patient themselves. They are left NPO because there was no coordination of nutrition care. And now we have got new terminology that has been added as far as population-based strategy is concerned. There was a time when dietitians were you know, in the U.S., they've been always much faster than and ahead of everybody. So uh, what they did was they had public health nutritionists and dietitians. They had uh, clinical dietitians and, and nutritionists. And then they had, uh, uh, you know, the community-based people and that sort of thing they had there. But now we find that it is the very population. You can have a diabetic who's sitting at home who is diabetic who needs to be taken care of. And that diabetic comes with a com complication, is admitted in the hospital. The same population, but you need to send him back to the community. You can't keep him in the hospital forever. So you have to have a population-based strategy on how things are going to be handled. And this has become a new component as far as the nutrition intervention terminology is concerned. Now, what is the description of critical thinking when it comes to nutrition? You have to set the goal and prioritize this. You need to define the nutrition prescription or the basic plan, making interdisciplinary connections, matching intervention strategies with clients' needs, diagnosis, and values, choosing from among alternatives to determine a course of action and specify the time and frequency of care. So this is what you need to think when you're talking about nutrition intervention. What come, now we come to the last part of it, and that is nutrition monitoring and evaluation. What are the examples? The domains are the same. What you did is assessment. You are going to reassessment when you're coming to monitoring and evaluation. So it is the same domains, food and nutrition related history, etc. Only thing is, some of the terms only will be used. Not all terms that you use in assessment will be applicable when it comes to monitoring and evaluation. So you need to get familiar with the terminology as uh, under each of these categories are concerned. Now, when it comes to nutrition monitoring and evaluation, you need to select indicators that will evaluate impact of nutrition intervention. The parameters for success, the time frame for measurement, can the process be or health outcome be measured? So there is a cascade of outcomes that you would actually be looking under nutrition monitoring and evaluation. What is their knowledge, belief, attitude, is it behavior? Is it food nutrient intake or physical activity and function? What is it that you're going to monitor and evaluate? Or you're going to look at anthropometric measurements and biochemical data, medical test procedures, or nutrition physical uh, focused physical examination? Or are you going to do nutrition related patient trying center measures? Sometimes it is a cascade. When you start giving them a particular intervention, you might first want to influence them on knowledge, belief, attitude, and impact their behavior. Then you will be able to bring them into control on the intake and their nutrient thing. So there is a cascade of outcomes that you will be monitoring and evaluating uh, in these patients. So uh, you need to understand that it is not just one outcome, but we are measuring outcomes at different levels. Having said that, how will you critically think when it comes to your evaluation? You need to select appropriate outcomes indicators using appropriate reference standards for comparison, defining where client is in terms of expected outcomes, explaining variance from the expected outcomes. This is very, very important. How variant it has been, why it has been variant, 
you need to be able to explain to the patient. Defining factors that help or hinder progress. Deciding between discharge or continued care. So this is the way you do critical thinking when it comes to your nutrition monitoring and evaluation. So when you go through this whole process, the questions we can now not only ask but answer locally and globally are, for example, how did you decide on this particular diagnosis intervention for this particular patient? You would be able to explain. It is, it is not random, okay? You, you would be able to document it and say, I looked at these, 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 these parameters and on basis of which I made this diagnosis. And because I made this diagnosis, this is what I thought would be the right intervention for this particular patient. What were you specifically addressing? Now, for example, a person who has been admitted for diabetes, but he came because he needed, you know, a cataract operation to be done that has developed over a period of time. And are you going to be addressing the cataract? No, you're not going to address the cataract. He will come in an, uh, in a daycare service and go away. But, you know, at that point of time, he won't even be available to you, even if you were to find that something not right with it. He is going to come in the morning and be gone in the next two hours. So how would you be looking at what you will address at that point of time? If you're called for a consult or if you will develop an idea and say, oh, these are the category of patients when they come. I would want to look into that and make it my research protocol and do this. So what specifically were you addressing must be identified. What did you think this, why did you think this approach was the best? Okay. That is where your expertise comes in. And I, I would say, I do it this way. And somebody would say, no, but I would do it this way. I would do it this way because that is what my experience tells. So though we are documenting it, as for these questions, still, you know, our expertise has a role and how we document it makes a difference. Did it work out the way you anticipated? What would you do differently next time if it didn't work? So this is how you go through this process when it comes to nutrition care process as well. What are the glimpses into the future? NCP will move dietitians to a new level of practice. It requires more critical thinking to accurately characterize the exact nutrition problem to be addressed and select intervention. It requires reflection to monitor and evaluate and determine if nutrition intervention needed expected outcomes. If not, why not? What nutrition intervention needed to achieve the desired outcome? It makes you think on that. Potential for measuring and reporting outcomes of dietitian care and continuous quality improvement to move profession forward. This is not what is happening at this point of time. I have a seat. I'm happily sitting on it and I'm happy as long as I got the job and until I retire, I'll be happily sitting there. No, you know, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics expects you to actually, if you become a member, you are supposed to be giving them credits of saying, this is a new thing I've learned. This is what I have, I've implemented in my care, in, in the process of care. You know, every year they have to get credit points on that. Unfortunately, at this point of time, we have an association where we are not doing any of these things at all. You know, there was a time when I was a, a big part of Indian Dietetic Association. Nowadays, you don't see me there because the people have never realized that the world has gone so much ahead and we're still busy, you know, at the conferences saying, oh, did your daughter get married? Did your son get married? Oh, how nice. You got a grandchildren now? Oh, you're wearing a nice uh, necklace. You know, that neck piece of yours is mine. We're still discussing these things at the conference rather than discussing critical care, which is where very, very disappointing to me. But I am so excited today when uh, I was given opportunity by Dr. Janki to address and she told me that, you know, she has 508 people who have, who have actually signed in for this. And I said, wow, what a great way of telling uh, all my fellow dietitians that, you know, we have a great potential and we should be, we don't need to go abroad. We can learn all these things here, practice it on our people because we're the world's biggest population load that we are we should tell the rest of the world what should be the right practice way not use western standards in india but have indian standards that should be not called indian standards but called universal standards if we can give zero to the world if we can give so many things that are absolutely unique to our culture 
Why is it? You know, when we talk about high biological protein, it's an obsolete term. Because India used the serial pulse combination and talked about high level of protein coming as complementary protein. And it was not only high level of protein, but it was protein sparing because it went along with carbohydrate and fat. You can't get that in egg. You can't get that in mutton. You can't get that in fish. So are we not people who are here? We're the world's biggest, oldest population. How did we survive? We did it because we had fantastic things, but we have forgotten. If we will get donuts, which look like vade, okay? But if we will get donuts, we will eat it. But we will tell our patients, don't eat vade, which is a very sad state of affairs. I still find our nephrologists are talking about, you know, telling most of the times the patients don't eat dal. But we are the world's biggest vegetarian population. Even people who eat non-veg, eat it once in a week, twice in a week, twice in a week, once in a month, once in a fortnight. You know, we are not basically non-vegetarian people. And yet, we are going by Western standards of saying, eat. you know, nowadays I find very funny thing which says, you can eat, uh, how many? 10 to 12 egg whites. And why? Poor eggs, uh, poor hens, they did not make the eggs with only egg whites. They gave it to you. And what will you do? I ask these patients, and what do you do with the yolks? Oh, we throw it away. How much of wastage? Are we, are we not required as dietitians to prevent this sort of wastage? So you need to understand that we, we need to. And there are people who have got wrong ideas about how they can consume this. Even if it is Amrit, even if it is panacea of things, you cannot eat, take it in excess. So you need to understand that as dietitians, our new level of practice should be where we are able to influence our patients and give them good results. There are a lot of people now who are saying pandemic, pandemic has made people become conscious about eating right things. I'm not too sure. You know, I'm still fighting with the health secretary in Tamil Nadu saying that if you will say that immunity is compromised in people who are picking up COVID-19, then how do you improve immunity? We know as far as our bodies are concerned, the whole thing is protein. Somatic protein, height and weight. Visceral protein, looking at your enzymes and hormones. Immunity protein, all three compartments come into the body influenced by your food. And everybody is now talking only kashayams. They are talking about only turmeric. They are talking about ginger. Where is the food in ginger? How many kilos of ginger will you take? How many kilos of turmeric will you eat? Where is immunity going to be impacted this way? The sad thing is, I am absolutely angry with the companies who have been inviting me to the seminars, the webinars, where they want, you know, all these uh, Italian people and the doctors talking and they know. And one of the doctors, I was so annoyed, who said, we need dietitians in India to, to take care of our patients, but they are missing. I said, excuse me, tell me where it is. I am willing to be there, part of your COVID-19 team. And I'm not, I'm not, I have no fear of death. And I'm very confident I will not pick up COVID-19 because I know how to take care of my nutritional status. This is how we need to be very confident in our care. And if we are not going to do this, I don't think there is any future. Till date, we were taught nutrition only in home science colleges, which was only food-based. Now we know that clinical nutrition has gone much, much ahead. And if we have to compete, you know, I remember when I was doing my master's and I went into the village to do my data collection, I was doing on preschool children. There were young mothers. They already had a child in school. They were carrying one in the arm. There was one that was tagging along and there was one in the tummy. Four children with one woman. And they were so surprised that, you know, I wasn't even married as yet. They became a little curious and they asked me, Hey, Didi, when are you getting married? And what is our brother doing? I said, he's a doctor. And they were shocked. I said, why, why are you looking so shocked? Didi, if we follow what you say, then our brother will have no practice. See, the wisdom of those people in the village, those women, that nutrition can prevent problems. Unfortunately, we are only looking at nutrition as an adjunct to medical therapy. It should be the other way around. Nutrition should be the main reason for treating patients and prevention and uh, uh, not only cure. If we are going to look at that, we need to unlock the potential that we have within us 
as practicing nutritionist and dietitian. The bottom line is that it takes a team with patient needs at the center. But as a dietitian, you have a key part of that team when empowered by using nutrition care process. This is very, very essential. We all need to talk standard language. We, are, we don't have to shy away. We don't have to fear anything. But we should be able to do the documentation and tell the world that, you know, this is how nutrition has to be practiced. It is not whims and fancies. It is not today you get a headline which says eat eggs and tomorrow it says headlines and says don't eat eggs. No, this is not nutrition process. This is not how you take care of nutrition. So nutrition care process is something which allows you to do critical thinking. It makes you ask the right questions and you will be able to practice in a perfect manner very scientifically. This is what I have done. I have brought in the connection between the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. You know, it's not possible for all of us to go abroad to get that training. And the nutrition care process would be uh, as an international postgraduate program. I am working and trying to, because of the COVID at this point of time, I'm not able to move forward. But I have asked Tamil Nadu MGR University to recognize. I don't believe in giving certificates for the sake of certificates. Where does it take you? But we must be on a, on, a, on a certification that has got weight, that has got value. I'm trying to create this institution, Indian Institute of Nutritional Science. As you're aware, this name is usually only by act of parliament. I am one quirk of a person. Okay, I always do something differently. And I own this name independently. Indian Institute of Nutritional Science, I'm the sole owner. I don't want to take it to, with me to the grave. I want to use it for my fraternity. I am willing any of you who listens to this, who is as impassioned as me when it comes to nutrition, you know, we can use this institute as a platform. We should create a major iconic institution when it comes to nutritional care. And we should work collectively for something like that. That is my vision. That is my mission. That is my principle. And on basis of which I have also written, I have got Dr. Esther Myers. Esther Myers is the person who is internationally known and she's the one who put together this whole nutrition care process with the academy. And uh, so I have got her into India. She has got an exclusive tie up with uh, uh, Indian Institute of Nutritional Science and we both wish to take this forward of teaching uh, nutrition care process and terminology to all the dietitians possible. And I am, I am quite willing to, uh, you know, work out on programs the way that each one of you would require it to, to learn and make it fast. But I think, it, you know, my dream is that at least we should have 5,000 dietitians in the next five years where we are all talking NCP and nothing else. If that can be achieved, then I think, you know, we would be, nobody can beat us. Nobody can beat us. Uh, when it comes to nutrition. At this point of time, I always say that the housemates are unskilled, unorganized labor, and the dietitians at this point of time are skilled, unorganized labor. Let's get organized. Unless we get organized and become a powerful force, we'll be trodden upon. No nutrition is taught to medical college students, and yet we depend on the doctors to lead us. How can they lead us? It is blind leading the blind. We need to unlock our potential. We need to look at how we will become strong in our profession. If we say it, nobody can challenge us because we are talking with conviction. We are talking with scientific basis and knowledge, and we are not talking on whims and fancies and emotions. I have got all these resources that I've used for the presentation from NCPRO, which is from Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. There are some very classic works that have been done. So I have included the academy resources that I've used for these presentations as such. And I would only once again thank Kunj Bihari, thank Dr. Janki and, and her team for having given this opportunity for me to convey to you my passion on bringing nutrition care process to India. And we must all work together being excellent in, in our profession. Thank you very much.
thank you so much ma'am uh, that was really 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 wonderful and uh, everybody is listening to you pin drop silence and uh, i got this comment daring and dashing speaker yes. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> that's what we attracted us as as a students now <laughs> look at the other generation now the next generation is also looking at you for uh, inspiration and they are uh, seeking your blessings too so uh okay hey, i also want to tell you people i right from the inception uh indian society for parental and natural nutrition right from its inception i was the one who was part of it and um, now it is going to be that i need to hand it over to dr ravindra reddy at hyderabad um uh, but uh, the thing is you know we, we last year we celebrated 25 years of our existence and uh, i think in the year 2021 or 22 we are again going to bring pensa the parental society of uh, asia uh, conference into india so we are working towards that towards our recognition but you know the we we definitely need to be on on a level where we are doing enough of research and documentation yeah, which is at an international level and that we are able to uh discuss you know with the doctors and say this is what needs to be done i do remember i had tough time when i was uh, when i started my career as a polo there were times when i had to challenge the doctors and said this is what you told me to do but that's not the right thing i have been challenging doctors only because i trained at leeds university at chicago medical school I have trained it all the places. Self taught at that point of time from the various universities, but I definitely would want to appeal and say, I am willing to bring this knowledge to India, provided the people are willing to learn. Yes, ma'am. In this uh, audience right now, we have uh, practice uh, people who are practicing, people people who are practicing individually, and people who are. Uh, uh in the teaching uh, area and uh, also future dietitians and uh, nutritionists are listening to you uh, everybody is much inspired and it's a, it's a totally a new uh, outlook to our practice and i have noticed one important thing uh, you are uh, you are so much involved in care process that you wrote on each and every slide tuesday tea talk oh. webinar series yes. Yes, yes. So thank you so much, ma'am, for that. It it gives us a lot of uh, push, a lot of inspiration, and uh, it means a lot to us. We since we started, it means a lot to us uh, to read our tea talks Tuesday tea talks on your slides. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, because you know uh, there was a time when everybody talked about journal clubs, okay? But sometimes it is that you know over. well anyway our narendra modi talks of chai pe charcha right <laughs> so you people are we have started this to this but no i i was quite happy to say that yes uh, somewhere you know you need to not only just have speakers sometimes you also need to have a journal article or a concept that needs to be discussed say but the thread bear you know you uh, wherein you, you will finally say okay all we dietitians will talk only this when it comes to our patients if you find any discordant way of what is going around you can make a correction on that basis so you know that way it remains within us we are able to sort it out whatever be the reason but you know we are giving a very collective picture to the rest of the world if that doesn't happen then you know people are not going to take us seriously <laughs>